Ark is here again. Some eight years following its initial launch, it's been dusted off and redrawn to accommodate the next generation in gaming hardware. Taking advantage of the latest game engines available and tapping into a multi cross player modding all under one roof experience. Feeling unprecedented in combined system features. But could this be an overpromise with failure to deliver? Or could this be the fruitful beginnings of another eight year lifespan? Despite the prospect of a UE5 overhaul, I did have some reservations on how familiar Ark and the island would feel. But after 200 hours, I'm just now starting to familiarize myself with a map that's captivated awe and wonder throughout, with every journey igniting a rejuvenated incentive to explore, and every new discovery flaring excitement to continue on. Kicking off with an introductory cinematic trailer meticulously crafted to showcase the potential of a survivor's reborn journey harnessing the power of Unreal 5 and told through the lens of a built-in feature, this easy-to-please fan was certainly wowed and primed to respawn again, though notably with a drop of awkward disdain in light of console players left in darkness and at the back of a worrying never-ending long queue line. Notably a confusing configuration to adopt the best graphic settings possible, something I felt sure I'd need to prepare for in PC parts, putting together a monolithic machine primed with an RTX 4080 courtesy of ASOS, 7000 series CPU from AMD, 64 gig of Fury Beast RAM and a 4 terabyte SSD to prepare for storage from Kingston and a big shout out to Cube Gaming PCs at box.co.uk for the setup, proven to be needed to run everything on epic settings and balancing the RTX settings to turn on DLSS and frame generation with super resolution ran between quality and balanced to nail a stable 60 frames per second, worth considering a huge investment to perform at best settings currently. And so the average player has most dialed down to run a stable frame rate and a certain concern for PS5 and Xbox Series players in what performance they can hope to expect. But with everything turned up to 11, there's no fundamental doubt this is a gorgeous looking game. Lighting pouring through trees, shadows casted from every rock and physics tied in and out to beaches our character spawns on. A character, by the way, that's been provided a brand new creation tool with enough options to feel yours to be unique, but enough to provide uncanny valley or absurdly sized iteration that feel much more springier in step, or perhaps that's the no fixed movement speed. But with just the right amount of jiggle and hair physics flowing through the wind, the initial spawning and touring felt just right between alien and familiarity. It's a shame a lot of settings can be turned off and needed for most currently, as footsteps can be seen imprinted by your player and splashes of water hurl with surf as you jump in, both of which are duplicated by the wildlife around you, or given a new engine polish with only a few remodeled but all flashing extra polygons for more detail and especially furrier creatures refreshed further taking advantage of hair physics. The same game mechanics remain from Ark Survival Evolved. Punch tree, build base, tame, explore, survive. But just enough feels new, it's an excitable, intriguing task. Creatures possess updated AI pathfinding built in, meaning they won't simply walk off a cliff or run repeatedly into a rock and navigate their best calculated route to either chase or follow you. Though not completely perfect, there's been plenty of movement that's left me in wonder at a creature navigating its own journey to find a safe route towards me. Taming is no different than the game before it, KO most with Trancaros, 
bar a few later inclusions desiring a few convoluted strategies, but wild dino babies are offered now with ASA, and in fact presenting an even easier tame now, simply requiring to kill their parents in front of them and click a button on said babies to call almost everyone Bruce Wayne. To find any, as well as a settlement, you'll need to adventure the map, and the level design is just simply breathtaking at times. Rock formations colliding into completely new buildable locations in familiar areas, caves to explore or remain as once was, but richer with detail and rebalanced in places to consider PvP. Clouds move to hide mountain tops and trees feel much more dense to barely make out the landmass at times and offer a more prehistoric jungle vibe. Rocks crack and break apart, trees cut and fall and flowing grass that interacts with you and your buildable structures. Structures which have all been overhauled, influenced by previous community members to provide new opportunities to build and ease of using throughout. A real joy to discover each and every buildable object and learn how pieces snap together now. Cleverly automated around terrain and customizable in a variety of shapes and sizes with the same pieces. Creativity in building feels unlimited enough for this casual builder, but there's a slight concern with a lack of fence foundation snaps that will there be a limit for the more ambitious crowds. Most new quality of life additions we've covered in a previous guide and would encourage you to watch that as you'll unearth a variety of new ways to play with a favourite in how the camera navigates around you. As before, customisable to being first or third person, depth of field stretches in and out or offset, but a new allowance to dialing close or far away whilst riding mounts to accommodate a PvP or cinematic approach is really welcomes. The former needing a new approach in raid assessments, owed to your orbital camera now unpassable through mesh, but compensated with a new camera mode, an in-game, in-depth option to allow you to customise a variety of features such as blur, time of day, tracking, but a great use to navigate at least a short distance from your character to plot out the road ahead. Provided in further detail throughout a new in-game map that allows you to ping important locations or enemies, find death locations and navigate to the variety of caves across the map, all of which deserve the highest praise from the sound team, with the eerie echoes bouncing through the corridors as you tackle each foe, footsteps crunch, armour chinks in motion and ambient setting emotions and moods that were never even close in the original game. Leading onto the score wonderfully composed by the ever-talented Gareth Coker with a selection of refined tunes to familiarise but elevate for a new ascended adventure and never missing a beat as they work in during discovery and combat. The initial introduction has been nothing short of wonderful, though certainly not plain sailing. Memory limitations have been rife throughout, with several crashes daily and server stability especially being so poor I've flat out refused to play on them until resolved, which just before this review has certainly improved since launch, though I do feel has a road ahead to go yet, and with consoles receiving a version of this over the next few weeks leaves a serious concern for performance. But if delivered stable, the promise is overwhelmingly favourable. Crossplay against Xbox, PlayStation and PC players all together on specific servers and the longevity of mod integration adopted to for console this time, inviting not only community built mods but business led game developers to create DLC worthy content promises a never ending opportunity of sandbox ideas. With the prospect of a further 11 maps to be added, possibly two brand new story driven maps based on an engine that's barely been unearthed, with already modded content proving new advantages, there's many reasons why it's a worthy paid upgrade. Though 
unexpected divide with many dramas through comms and deals and the reality to play this as good as it should look requires a heavy investment and feels as much future proofing as it does isolating in a way. The premise of clean code base doesn't sit well either with some exact same bugs found once again, though perhaps the interpretation is off and this is meant to describe something else, but optimization has been a rough enough road from day one. Only now, some weeks in, feeling like the dust is sort of setting, it's clear that the product feels ever so slightly rushed with the developers working day and night since launch to fix an overwhelming amount of stability issues and only just now but now nonetheless I'm personally beginning to feel that I could get bored did I not have the number of other server or mod options available. Whilst I'm sure I'm looking at this from bias tinted glasses with a wish to want the best for Ark Survival Ascended, it's groundbreaking technology in our grubby survivor hands, a joyous adventure all survival enthusiasts will enjoy and new players especially treated, but the real review comes in the form of what's yet to come. Console, crossplay, mods, DLC, and if all performs without a hitch, could and should package this to become the best survival sandbox game available. I hope you all enjoyed this. If you did, comment below. Let me know if you had disagreed or agreed. I'd love to read what you've got to say. Until the next one, my name's Ross Clark. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, up, peace up, up.